Thank you for uh, that introduction. And now officially, good morning. Um, it's great to be back in Western South Dakota. And great to be uh, back in Rapid City. Uh, Congress is out of session during the month of August. Thank you. Sometimes that is a, an applause line, but uh, if we're not in session, we can't do anything to you. But, um, but I, we will be back in September, and uh, when we go back the day after Labor Day, there's a very busy agenda, as you all know, lots of, lots of uh, items on the agenda, uh, many of which I think are a great concern to people all across the country, which is why I think there have been so many people that are attending meetings like this to, to, have, to voice their concerns and to express their opinions about that, and, I, and frankly, that's what, what this is about today. I think it's really important on issues of great consequence that we uh, take great thought and deliberation and make sure that we're hearing from people across the country and specifically for me, people here in South Dakota uh, about their views on the big issues of the day. Now I know there's a lot of, a lot of interest in the issue of health here and I'm going to get into that in just a minute here and, and kind of walk you through a little bit of where I think we are in terms of the fiscal landscape and then more than anything else I'm here to listen to you. I want to hear what's on your mind, uh, try and answer questions if I can, if you have comments, observations, I'll uh, listen to those, but uh, for me this is, a, this is about hearing from you and, uh, and that's uh, the purpose of the meeting this morning. So uh, with that brief introduction, what I thought I might do is um, to specifically on the issue of health care, and I know there may be some, some questions on other, other issues today too, but on the issue of health care, I thought what I might do is just kind of walk you through a little bit about where we are with regard to the fiscal situation in the country because I think that shapes all these decisions. I think everything that, that we deal with uh, in the near term and in the long term for that matter needs to be influenced by uh, where we are as a country and uh, the fiscal situation that we find ourselves in. So what I want to do is I've got a little PowerPoint here, a couple of slides, and uh, I guess that's why the lights were off in the first place, which makes sense to me now. But if somebody wanted to, uh, if somebody wants to, to kill the lights here for just a minute so you can see this, for those of you who can't see it, uh, and if you flip the fish, skip that one, Wes, because that has to do with uh, energy issues. This is, a, uh, this is a slide that tells you kind of where we have been historically in terms of our federal debt as a percentage of our gross domestic product over the last 50 years or so. Uh, and if you look at the graph, the line graph obviously, the, 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 the sort of dotted line there is the average. So it's about average for about 36% of our gross domestic product is composed of public debt. Debt that's held by the public that we sell to finance things for the government. And so it goes up and down over time, but historically it's about 36%. We can see when we hit 2008 that thing goes up like a rocket. It spikes, and that's that's where we are today. Next slide. This is the uh, the amount of debt accumulated. For those of you maybe in the back who can't see that, uh, the first 232 years of American history. If you go back to the Revolutionary War through the end of 2008, cumulative debt, cumulative debt, debt that we over that period of time piled, uh, 5.8 trillion dollars. The amount of debt that we will rack up just in the next seven years is nine trillion dollars. So if you take that $5.8 trillion, which is over 232 years of American history, the total amount of debt that we have accumulated, and, and add $9 trillion on top of it, that's the amount of debt that we're going to pile up in just the next seven years. And if you go into the 2019 10-year time frame, we actually, if you can believe this, will double the federal debt in five years and triple it in 10 on the current path that we're on. So that's, that's an example, a little bit of where we are in terms of debt. Next slide. This shows it in a bar chart form. If you look at, again, historically going back to the 2000, where we actually were still at that time running a few surpluses, and then in starting, it starts to come up, drops back down a little bit, 2008 spiked up. And then you look at 2009 and beyond, we have these huge debts. This year, the debt for fiscal year 2009, the year we're in, is $1.6 trillion. It's going to be about $1.5 trillion next year, and then it drops down, at least if, if things go according to plan, of course these are all estimates, to about a trillion dollars a year or a little under, some varies between uh, 700 and 800 billion and up to 900 billion dollars going on for the next uh, for the next decade. So we average over that time frame about a trillion dollars of debt per year. Uh, these, are, these are deficits, these are adding to the debt that we already have. This is the amount of debt that we're going to add. That kind of illustrates the bar chart form. Next slide. 
This is the, uh, the, what I mentioned earlier, the doubling and tripling of debt, another way of looking at it. Um, these are the deficits that, uh, or the amount of debt that we're carrying starting back in 2000 and then running it up to uh, 2019, which would represent the, the picture 10 years from now. So that's the kind of uh, debt that the public, the American public, that we're going to be owing, all of us as Americans. And, and by the way, by the end of 2019, just the debt that we will accumulate between this year and 2019, over this next 10-year period, uh, amounts to $80,000 per family, for those of you who are trying to put that into per family form. That's just, that's just the next 10 years. That doesn't include the last, what we already have. But the debt that we're going to pile up in the next 10 years is $80,000 per American family. Next slide. Now, um, the one thing about health care that I think is important to note is when you look at this fiscal situation, you think about health care and the cost of health care, we spend a sixth of every, every dollar in our economy on health care, and that's going to be one in five pretty soon. So if you think about 17% of our entire economy being spent on health care, it's about two and a half trillion dollars a year that we spend on health care. And you would think that if you were going to reform health care, what you would want to do is something that gets costs under control so that that debt situation doesn't worsen, but improves. Well, what the Congressional Budget Office said in testimony that they've offered before various committees of the Congress is that when they were asked the question, does this um, cost curve bend down uh, as a result of the proposals that are in front of the Congress, the answer was no. And in fact, what the director said, Doug Elmendorf said, is the way I would put it is the curve is being raised. In other words, the cost for health care in this country, if these proposals are enacted, doesn't come down, it goes up, and it goes up significantly. Next slide. And just to illustrate that, this yellow line is the line of health care expenditures, federal, federal health care expenditures, on the trajectory that we're on today. And that's how much it's going to increase over the course of the next several years. The red line represents how much it would increase under the bill that is under consideration in the House of Representatives. Bear in mind there's a bill in the House and a bill in the Senate, um, and, but both of them are very similar. But that's when I say the cost curve doesn't come down. Theoretically, if you were going to reform health care and reduce costs, you would want to see that red line start bending down and crossing the yellow line. But what's actually happening is the cost, after, after enactment of either of these health care proposals, the actual cost is going to go up rather than down. So it bends the cost curve up rather than down. 